welcome the Wicked Witch is back. <laughs> In the last video I was making myself a new potion book because I've lost my old one but now I've got all these wonderful new potion recipes I'm going to need a magic wand to cast those spells. Now just like my books I've made magic wands in the past and they're really great fun so I'm more than happy to make some more to add to my collection. So the two main basic things we require, let's make that three, is hot glue and a hot glue gun. Some chopsticks or maybe some thin dowel rods would work just as well. But we find the wooden Chinese chopsticks are absolutely perfect for making fantastic magic spell casting wands and an assortment of paints and colours to decorate your finished wand in the way you would like. Now added extras that aren't essential but nice to have at this time of year in lots of the shops you'll find little packets and bags of various plasticky Halloween decorating -y pieces of bugs and insects and bats and mice. So some of the smaller ones of those are quite fun to be adding to your magic wands. This particular wand that I've made before was actually made by taking this bright orange skeleton skull and sticking it onto the, nearly said cocktail stick, onto the chopstick and painting it to the colour I wanted it's worked most effectively and I like it lots. Now I have a selection of things I can use. I've got some more of these skulls. I think I'll make another one of those. It's really simple and most effective. Oh, and lots of little tiny black spiders. So perhaps I'll put some of those on my wand. So I'm going to start very basic with one of my skull heads. So first of all, I'm just going to, it came with a little hooky loop. It probably had the rest of the skeleton somewhere. I don't know where that's gone. So I'm going to cut that loop off. I don't want it today. Now the hole that's in the bottom of this is not quite big enough. If I use my hot glue gun without any glue, just hot, I should be able to melt that hole a bit larger. So that seems to be working quite nicely. Let's see if it'll fit now. Oh yes, fits on wonderfully. So I'm going to squirt, cover this in glue, just so my skull has something to stick to. I need more glue. Where's my glue stick? There we go. In with another stick. I'm also going to squirt some glue inside the skull. Get this stick to stick on it. So with the hot glue, I don't know what shape I want, circles maybe, I'm just going to go around and glue some circles onto this stick quite close together. Slowly rotating the chopstick as I squirt out some more hot glue, adding several rings to this particular wand. One more. <laughs> what have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, one more. Odd numbers always seem to look better. Threes and fives and sevens. No idea why. So that's this one for now. Really basic and simple. Some hot glue circles or rings glued around the chopstick on my skull head stuck on the top. Now this one that I've made before, the orb on the end was actually built up with just constant layer after layer after layer of hot glue. Put some layers on, let them cool, add some more, let it cool. But something else you can do to create this round end is take one of these spooky googly eyes to give you a start for your ball. So that's what I'm going to do with this one. 
just like I did with the skull head I'm going to melt a hole in the bottom to fit onto our chopstick using the point on the end of my hot glue gun there's already a mark in this eyeball a factory point where it was sealed together there we go melt a hole perfect is that big enough not quite a little bit more slowly pushing in the point of my glue gun to make a nice big hole will that fit yay that fits nicely so that will give me a nice easy start a nice round shape to work with so just like our skull i'm going to put some glue on my stick actually i'll put some glue on the end of my stick and drip some into the eye just so the stick will hopefully stick into it when I push it inside. Move that around to level it up nice. There we go. And I'm going to add some glue around the bottom here to join it in. Seal up that join. Make it nice and neat, building up the glue underneath this eyeball. It's not going to stay as an eyeball. Now I've created, I've got quite a thick area of glue underneath my eyeball. So I'm just going to let that cool off. I want it to be my eyeball and then coning in, not just the orb stuck on the end. I want it to graduate. I might add some more layers actually and have this really coming in. So I'll let that cool and we'll do a bit more work on it when it's cooled off. I don't know which way up I want it. That way, I think. Pop him in there, that way up. No, don't touch the skeleton. Ah! <laughs> we stuck together. There, that'll be fine. And take that bit off there. We don't want it. How are you doing? Oh, he's cooled up nicely. We can lay him on the table now. So now for another wand. And I think I'm just going to build this one up using the hot glue. I'm not sure what shape I want it to be though. So let's start building up that glue. Glasses back on so I can see. And just stripes of glue along the stick. Then in between the stripes, I'll add more. lump of glue on the end of our cocktail. We keep calling them cocktail sticks, they're not. They're chopsticks. More glue, one more glue. This one might take two or three sticks of glue because I'm planning quite a big lumpy end. Building up stripe after stripe of glue to give me that thick chunky end I'm aiming for. Ooh, it would be good if it stayed that nice glassy bubbly clear colour. <laughs> That would be a wonderful end to a wand. Unfortunately, as the glue dries, it goes very white and opaque. and doesn't stay crystal and clear. So how's our eyeball getting on? Ooh, doing nicely. I'm going to add some more to my eyeball. Say I want to build this up so we're coming from the eye and then in a triangle shape down graduating into the stick. Impatient. I think that will be okay to sit. I'm going to add some more, another layer to this one. Well, it's a good handle like that. So let's make it thicker. Finish melting that into shape in a moment. And we've got a skull head. Let's see if I can do a simpler one, just with a spiral going down the wand. Uses less glue and should look just as effective. Little bit at the top, give it a knobbly handle. Uh, so a very basic spiral of glue going down the wand 
will make a very effective magic wand when it's all painted up. So we don't have to have these big heavy globs of glue that I've got going on here. Now this one, I know what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to melt deep ridges in it. I'll melt some big deep channels in it. Here I'm holding the side of my hot glue gun tip against that big lump of glue to melt it into a new shape, giving it some channels and ridges. Well, this one's turned out nothing like I thought it would when I started. I'm very pleased with it though. So I'm going to leave these standing in their cup to cool off completely while I go and have a nice cup of coffee. And then we'll come back and paint them. Now back from coffee and our magic ones are nice and set and cool. So now it's time to paint them. Oh, I could keep that eyeball <laughs> as an eyeball. That would be fun. I don't know what colours I'm going to use. I've got lots of acrylic paints. I'd definitely be using gold and silver. I think perhaps I'll start with some of this patholo blue that I used on the book. Maybe for this one. So let's start with some blue. I'm going to keep my paint quite thick for a moment. It may need a couple of coats. Oh, I don't know, this first coat's looking quite good. Getting all those nooks and crannies and crevices. Right, I think that'll do for that blue one. Now what colour for my skull? Hmm, I've already got a grey and white skull. Green wand bit. Make the whole thing green and gold. A green and gold skull. Yes. Colour him in all over. Into the eye sockets. Up his nose. Round his teeth. I haven't got a red wand. I think I'll make a red one. Perhaps the eyeball. A red wand with a golden orb at the top. Brush. So this is going to be, I think, gold on the top and red for the wand. Oh yes, nice. I like it. What about a white wand? Perhaps I'll make my swirly wand white. Haven't got a white one. I don't know if this white is going to be highlighted with gold or silver, or maybe another color like black. We could have a zebra stripey wand. So now my first and second coats of paint are dry. Time to start using the gold and silver. First a few basics, I want the stem of this one to be silver and the head of my eyeball to be completely covered in gold. So we'll do those first, some gold and some silver and lots of gold all over the end of this one. Liberally painting everything with gold, all of the glue and all of that eyeball Looking nice. Now can I balance it in there? Yes. Now this one, I just want to use the gold as a highlighter. I've got a little piece of sponge and I'm going to use that in my gold paint. Dab it about. Dab it on an empty paint palette to squish off the excess and very lightly and gently I'm going to tap that against my wand so it's just putting a little bit of gold on the raised textures. Oh, 
just very gently better to do three or four gentle dabs than one big heavy splush tapping it over the skull pick up some of the detail and i think that'll do for him spooky headed wand skull headed wand Now then, I don't know whether I want to do the white one, I think in gold, because I have a grey and white, which grey looks quite silvery, so I'll do this in a gold. Just like I did with the skull head, some paint on our sponge, dab it around so it's not got too much, don't want it overloaded, and very gently tap, 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 tap over the raised bits on our wand. There's my white and gold swirly wand. So with my blue one, now my silver wand, I'm going to use the opposite side of my sponge and use that same sponging technique just around the tips of here. I don't know if I like that. We'll see what it's like when it's dried. I liked it when it was just blue. I think I'd prefer it highlighted in gold. I don't know, what do you think? <laughs> Should I paint it gold? It can always be changed, it's only paint. So there we have it. Four new wonderful magic wands to add to my wand collection. I think these two are my favourites and the white one's just different to anything else I've done before. Would make a good fairy's wand. And I'm not sure about this. I was liking it until I put the silver on the top. I think I might change that. But I'm not sure. I'll live with it for a day or two and see what I think. So that's it for today. Bye for now and we'll see you next time. And remember, whatever you're doing, have fun doing it. If you've enjoyed today's video, don't forget to click that like button and let me know. Click subscribe and YouTube will make sure you see my next video. So bye for now and we'll see you next time. And don't forget, whatever you're doing, have fun doing it.